going to be reading Angels Unaware, which is a short story that I just wrote yesterday. When Samuel sits down, not quite next to the girl, but not quite apart from her either, the metal bench creaks beneath his heft. Back in his college days, the extra weight had been more tool than weakness, reinforced with solid muscle and bones that resemble those of a small ox. Now, though, the man's girth strains against his ink and crimson business suit, a constant source of annoyance and insecurity. He is merely the shadow of a once formidable warrior. The girl is small, with pale rounded shoulders and big blue eyes that gleam violet in the late afternoon sunlight. She holds a book in her spidery fingers, a small patchwork volume embellished with pictures of wide-winged doves and twirling mint leaves. A pale purple sundress comes to rest around her ankles in gentle swirls, kissed by the blissfully cool summertime breeze that wafts in through the open door. Every shift of the fabric, so slow and so beautiful, makes Samuel's gut lurch. Her pale rosebud lips turn up to form the gentlest of smiles. My name is Elizabeth. The man raises a single caterpillar-like eyebrow. Oh, his brother has had laughed on the day of his birth, how they had chortled at the sight of the babe's smooth chocolate face, its gentle beauty marked only by those thick and bushy brows. Hello, Elizabeth. Are you going to tell me your name? The girl inquires, letting the strange little journal flop against her barely bent knees. She blinks up at Sam with those strange eyes, round as an owl's, and neither blue nor truly purple, but a strange and unearthly blend of the two, accented by a burst of gold around the pupils. No, the man responds without deliberation, nostrils flaring and his thick, flat nose. His rebuff seems to frighten the girl into silence, for she spends the next few minutes with her lips tightly pursed and her gaze fixed firmly on an empty point on the wall, as though enraptured by an image that is visible to her and to her alone. Samuel watches a pair of nurses dash about in their smiley face scrubs, speaking to one another in hushed, anxious voices. The shorter and slighter of the duo, a bird-like woman with pale, tightly blonde hair, exchanges, exchanges quiet words with a hunchback man who shrinks away from her as though every gentle murmur is a flesh-piercing dagger. Samuel bites his lip. That could be him left reeling in the wake of words he cannot bring himself to believe. But it won't be, Elizabeth murmurs in her startlingly thick voice. She reaches out and touches her pale, stubby, stubby nailed fingers to the wrinkled brown trunk of his arm. Samuel cannot bring, bring himself to flinch away from the contact, however unwelcome it may be. Won't it? Samuel tries to twine his fingers together, but they are too thick. If he is disarmed by the child's intuitive words, he does not show it. She's got cancer, my wife does. We found out almost a year ago, just after my kid's birthday. He slurs the word my and wife together, transforming them into a single gruff voice syllable laced with love and flecked with anxiety. The doctors they say they can remove the tumor, and they say that it'll be all right, that the surgery has a high success rate. The man's big back slumps over, and he lets his chin rest between those sausage fingers. And if it don't, I'll snap their necks. I told them so. You love her. Elizabeth observed in a tone just as rough as his own, just as wounded. It makes Samuel feel sick. No child should be forced to bear that world-weary rasp. You love her so much, and you're so afraid. Yeah, the former linebacker snarls, sitting up straight and running his hands, smeared with tears and the greasy remains of hospital fries through his thick and graying hair. The girl does the same, a small smile flickering on her thin, almost colorless lip. <clears throat> Her tangled, flame-colored locks slip out of their messy bun, curling and twirling around the teenager's freckled cheeks. Samuel frowns. The hell do you want anyway, girl? To listen, Elizabeth requires, replies, quirking an eyebrow. I thought that was obvious. Looks more like a brat sticking her nose in a grown man's business. If you don't want to talk to me, you don't have to. Quiet fills the waiting room once again. An ant scuttles its way across the clack cracked linoleum floor. An old but muscle-bound woman sits in the corner, thumbing through a health magazine and spooning yogurt into her garishly pink mouth. The operation should have been finished by now, Samuel grunts. There's been a complication, his pale-faced companion replies. Not a large one, though. We'll be done soon. How would you know? The girl simply shrugs, her preternatural eyes downcast. She opens the journal, turning quickly to a page that has been filled with a thin and sprawling script. She died when you were very young, didn't she? The man's eyes, half closed with fear and exhaustion. He's been up for more than 20 hours by now. Shoot open. I was 12. Cancer? In the skin, just like my wife, except... 
Oh, my old gran. She was too proud to see a doctor and too stubborn to admit that she wasn't so young anymore. And she hated medicine and hospitals and surgeries. A smile dances on Samuel's lips, disproportionately full, and when he raises his gaze, it is not Elizabeth he is seeing, but a woman with chestnut skin and eyes like liquid coffee. Such a stubborn old woman, bless her soul. She died happy. The girl shatters the illusion with her harsh voice, so unlike his, his grandmother's lilting giggle. You were all there with her, her babies and her babies' babies, and that was all she ever wanted. He didn't let her go alone. We all go alone in the end. Elizabeth snorts, and when her nostrils flare, Samuel can see a small black ring glinting against the dimpled skin. Do you really believe that? Unless the old man himself came down to guide her home, how else could it be? The child wrinkles her nose, and Samuel cannot help but picture a bright orange bunny with flopping ears and twitching whiskers. The old man, eh? People always do that. They assume that God is just this big, wrathful man with a bushy beard and alabaster skin and a thunderbolt in each hand. I don't know why. God could be anything. He could be a businessman with a flat nose and fluffy eyebrows and skin like hot coffee. She grins and those ethereal eyes shine with mischief. God could be a little girl with ragdoll hair and a pale purple dress. Samuel, despite his fear, despite the anxiety that has plagued his sleep for weeks on end, laughs. God is taller than you. Elizabeth bows her head. I suppose he is. Another nurse comes bustling into the waiting room, his narrow face flushed with victory. His scrubs are garish and tacky, midnight blue in color, and patterned with polka dots and bright pink elephants. His close-cropped hair gleams blonde. The little redhead stands up, brushing off her dress despite the fact that it is flawlessly clean. He's here for you, she breathes. Mr. Page? The young man asks, turning towards Samuel, who has already leaped to his feet. Ah, oh, Mr. Page, good news. Your wife has just emerged from the operating room. The doctors are still running tests while she's under anesthesia, but the surgery appears to have gone just as planned. It'll be a good couple minutes before she wakes, but as soon as she does, I'll come and get you. Even as he bustles off, the boy continues to smile, as though nothing pleases him, pleases him as much as bearing this most splendid of news. Elizabeth moves so that her slender hand grazes across Samuel's broad shoulders. The man reaches up, his thick fingers enveloping his companion, his savior's thin ones. I told you so. The man's face, so large and heavy and fearful mere moments ago, is now shining with sweet joy and salty tears. I don't know how you know what you know, girl, but thank you. God, thank you. She's okay, he thinks, and the words are almost too beautiful to be real. My wife is going to be okay. Elizabeth stoops to retrieve her little blue and purple writing book. She turns to move, she turns to move towards the door, but stops short, frowning, and asks, as if on a whim, do you believe in angels, Samuel? Right now, girl, I believe in everything, every god and every angel, and I love them all. Samuel turns to watch Elizabeth as she departs without another word, her slender arms bouncing against an equally slender, slender waist. Her hair has all but escaped from its once tight bun, and her eyes are, his eyes are drawn to, his, drawn to her back, which seems strangely broad, contrasting awkwardly with the girl's slight build. He swears that he can see the silhouette of two wings, broad and red like the dying sun, emerging from both sharp shoulder blades. Mm -hmm.